Well, hi folks. Wednesday evening, half past seven. 25 degrees still. The heat wave continues. It's absolutely roasting. So I'll just give you a little round up, show you what's going on, how things are progressing. So I'm not had any water at all to water me crops with, so they've just got to be put up with <laughs> what's in the soil at the moment. But they're growing really well. The peas are absolutely hanging off now. Tons of them. Nearly, I would say, another three or four days and they'll be ready to take, but literally hundreds, absolutely hundreds of them. So they've grown really well this year. They were absolutely terrible last year. Don't know why. Grow them the same way, same place as last year and this year. So far we've got a belting crop if they pod up. And they seem to be hanging off the other side as well. So I can't complain about those. This is the second lot of lettuce. Just uh, starting to bulk up a bit. These are the icebergs. Now starting to heart. So they won't be too long, maybe another fortnight. They should be really nice, nice and green inside. Unlike the yellow horrible things you get in the shops. And some of the outdoor cost lettuces, little gems again. Like I said, not had any water. You can see the soil cracked like Death Valley. I can stick my finger down six inches like that, look. Bone dry. But the thing is, if they're really, really dry, then they will send the roots down to find the moisture. The worst thing you can do is just give them a little sprinkling of water with a watering can, because that all that does is keep the roots really shallow. And then when it does dry out again, they just suffer and they'll die. But if you just treat them mean, like I said, they will find the way down to moisture without any problem. So, like I said, these haven't been watered for, oh, they must be nearly six weeks now. They've not had a drop of water because it's not rained and I don't water them outside. So, doing all right. One thing that could do with a little bit of water to bulk to bulb up the onions, but plenty of time for those yet. No, sorry, they're the shallots, the jumbo ban banana shallots perked up. These are the onions, got a few rows in here and a few in the other bed. Non bolted whatsoever because I've used the heat treated ones, heat treated sets. Now, given this heat wave and the dry soil, I'd have used normal onion sets. I can guarantee that most of them would have gone to seed now because of the shock of it all. But when you use the heat treated onion sets, which cost about a penny, penny or two more a set, they never, they never seem to bolt and um, go to seed. So you left, you, you always get a good crop no matter what the weather. Garlic's looking all right. I've not had a root about to see how big the bulbs are yet, but it's looking healthy. And the lettuce is outside now. They're absolutely huge. Again, no water. I've only got five of these left, so just about timed it right. The multi-green again, absolutely massive. Pest free. Fantastic. we are taking some of the spring onions. I'll take another bunch of these tonight. Taken quite small because I've got hundreds growing, so there's no point in waiting till the till the big and then having two 200 bunches that are massive. So all the spuds. I've been trying to find as much water as I can from all the old water butts I've got, all the stagnant muck in the bottom, and just been watering with that. So they're doing okay. That's one crop that does need watering because they're in pots. And because they've now got flowers on, the spuds will be forming. So they need as much water as I can give them, which isn't a lot because I'm absolutely bone dry now. I'd have to uh, carry, take some water up just for the polytunnel. Went to the local car wash and got some of these barrels, washed them out. 25 litres, I've been taking four of those up every three days and then driving them down here through all that stuff in the Land Rover and then filling my barrel up which that then percolates into me the one in the polytunnel because like I said the ones outside we are empty absolutely empty now so I'm getting enough of the polytunnel which is the main thing because what, like I said stuff outside can fend for itself but in the polytunnel obviously it doesn't get any rain and it needs to be brought up with the horse flies. So it may be a bit bright because I'm looking straight into the sun, but these are uh, these are the leeks. Again, could do some water, but this, like I said, they're perking up. Doing all right. Second lot of onions. I've got horse flies all around me now. Get out of here. Second lot of onions and the daft runner beans. There's a little pheasant's nest. One flew off when I came up before, so they just seem to nest in my soil. So giant marrows are starting to run now, I've still got a little bit of wind break up just in case we get some strong winds 
So they're doing all right. They're starting to vine, starting to fly along the bed, like that one. So they've obviously got the roots down. I've been giving those a little bit of water, but just around the root ball and a lot every three or four days rather than the sprinkling, like I said, to get the water down deep. So, so far, Maras, so good. I'm going to plant a few turnips in this bit, I think. I've got a little spare bit of ground, so I should sow some turnips soon. And then the old kale in the box, idiot proof as normal. Should be taking some of that soon, but that'll last all over winter. So I sowed a second lot of peas about three weeks after the first lot to hopefully get a successional crop, which looks like I've timed it about right because there's no pods on these. So these are, like I said, they probably are two or three weeks behind the others. So once the others stop podding, and having said that, there are a few little pods, but we should get a, you know a good sort of month or six weeks worth of picking, which will do. So that's the sweet peas. If you can see the polytunnel there. I had to put a bit of shade on because it was getting ridiculously hot for the onions and they were getting scorched. It was 48 degrees in there the other day. So I've had to put this little shade up. And I put a shade up inside so hopefully that should keep the temperatures down a bit. And then the sweet peas. I've just grown a few sweet peas but we've been flowering for about a week or two now. Never had sweet peas as early as that ever. It's usually like August time they start coming but I think it's probably the hot weather again shocked them into, into flowering earlier but it's nice to pick a few few of the old flowers now and again so we'll have a look into polytunnel again thankfully we've had a breeze today straight down south south eastly so as you can see it flapping it's kept it cool today because it's been the hottest day of the, of the year today we've been 31 degrees up here we don't get temperatures like that up in Yorkshire they're not not right used to it. Anyway, <coughs> stuff's growing really well. Cucumbers climbing up. Got a few setting now down there, as you can see. So they should start filling out. Little yellow courgettes. I've been taking quite a few of those. Only little, as little tiny fruit, but uh, growing well. Loving the heat. The French beans are going bonkers now. So I've. I'm training up to the top and I'm going to train them along this string. And we've now got some, if I can find them, I saw some before. Yep, yeah, the first crop of beans. That's earlier than normal as well. June, it's usually July, so I'll pick those tonight. There's a few, should be enough for a feed. And there'll be millions more coming. If you can see all these trusses of them there, all the way up. So we won't be short of beans for a few months now. So the show carrots, again, just still plodding away. They don't mind the heat and the long ones, same as ever. And the micros yet that I grow every year, which is finally starting to grow. And that's starting to put a few little courgettes on as well, which is nice. Now the giant spuds, I've never seen potato plants as big as that. And I only planted one sprout from a potato for each plant. There's three plants there. And I've skifted about in the soil and I've just removed every potato apart from I've just tried to leave one on each plant so all the energy from all that is just going into three potatoes hopefully so we'll see if they do grow accordingly then we should get a huge potato but it's all in the lap of the gods whether you get a, a freak potato or not really there's a lot of luck involved so that's those I'll just zoom across to the carrots carrots are doing well Growing all right, giving them, keeping them plenty watered. So they're looking all right, but you never know what's gonna, whether they've split or gone rotten until you pull them up. Right then, onto the onions again. Still no problems. Couldn't be happier. Absolutely huge. I'll just get something to give you a bit of perspective. Put that there. 330 mil can of pot. Check the size of these out now. They're all over 20 inches now. That's the biggest one there. 21 and a bit now, so well on the way to a record. If we get to 28 inches, it'll definitely be 10 pound and could be quite a bit more because it's a tall shaped one with a really thick neck. It's growing about an inch a week, inch and a half a week, so plenty of time if it keeps growing. Still got healthy leaves. Stop putting any more new leaves out, but uh, like, like they do, once they start to bulb, they stop growing the leaves generally. And also bought some anti threat predators. If you see, they're like, there's 50,000 predatory mites in each of these packs. 
and all they do is crawl about all over your leaves and if they find any little immature baby thrips or thrip eggs and stuff they just eat them and kill them so I've put loads on every plant just to be rather to, you know to be safer rather than sorry they cost quite a lot of money they were 20 quid for 50 sachets but it was 12.95 for 10 sachets so I thought I might as well get 50 for 50% 50 more and cover all my plants in thrip killers so we should reduce the uh, risk of getting them so yeah so, as you can see, they're all much of a muchness. That's quite a nice one there. I think that's the second biggest one. Nice shape. Look at that, lovely. So, fingers crossed, if they keep growing, we should be in for a big one. So, it's that hot in here. I don't know whether to go to the greenhouse and show you what's going in there. There's only a few chilies and peppers and stuff like that. But if not, I'll say it city later. But if I do, then have a look at greenhouse in a bit. Well I thought I did make it to the greenhouse, I'm sweating like a pig but uh, I'll just show you what's going on in here. Start off at this side, these are the tumbling tomatoes, as you can see we're getting to get a few ripening up now, which is early and there's absolutely hundreds coming as usual. Look. And they just let them sprawl about everywhere, they just they get to about a foot high and then they just start to branch out. Properly idiot proof, like I said really prolific. That's the sort of size you get, sort of in between a, a big one and a little one. And they're really good. I've put some more of those thrip things on, because like I said, I've got hundreds of them. Well, 50, so safer than sorry. These are some of the peppers. Nothing fancy, just sweet peppers. Start to get peppers on them already. And this is one of those banana peppers, sweet banana peppers, the long ones, hopefully. So they're quite nice and a few of the chilies again going bonkers this year fruiting up already with the extreme extreme heat it's gotten flowering earlier through the shop but plenty of chilies on already again some more peppers excuse me these are the Joe's long chilies which I'm growing for Harrogate sure but they're looking really leggy they're the ones that grew under lights and as you can see they're really sort of stretched out so I'm not sure what the problem is with those, but we'll see how they get on anyway. I've only grown a couple of big tomato plants this year. This is surely, surely not. I'm starting to get some trusses on now, a couple of two or three trusses. So they should swell up and ripen eventually. And a gardener's delight there. Let's do a bit of maintenance, a bit of a side shoot there. I don't know, we've got a truss coming there, look. So. Should have a few of those, so really it's just peppers, 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 chilies. Uh, which one's a habanero? This is a habaneros. Or is it jalapenos? The ones you get on pizzas. Jalapenos, isn't it? I'm not sure. One of the, they're not strong anyway, so even I can eat these. So that's good. More chilies. Joe's long. And then a cucumber. Looking a bit wilting in, in the sun. I'm getting some fruit on now look that was nothing about three days ago I was putting plenty out so I'll just give them I'll just give everything a really good water in tonight as usual and uh, should be all right now remember I've replanted the potatoes and got a really good crop out of them well I've replanted the replanted bits so I've put every single one bit back in back in one pot and we'll just see can we get a crop out of a third replant or a second replant who knows, we've got to give it a go, you've got to try these things. Nothing ventured and all that. Anyway, that's about it folks, I'm off to have a shower now because I'm it's so hot and horrible. But I'm not complaining, it's lovely weather. We've got a summer for once. See you later.